we're going to look into God's word and receive inspiration. It's tearing up <clears throat> and get challenged to do what you are supposed to do to become who you are supposed to become. One peculiar thing about God is that he has made arrangements for everything to work in his kingdom. So when you see a believer, a child of God, that things are not working, the things of God are not happening the way they should happen, he himself is not experiencing what the word has said concerning his life. The problem is never with God. The problem is never with the kingdom of God. The problem is always with the man. Whether lack of understanding or is joining to something else. The way God operates, he doesn't share you with any other thing. The way God operates, you cannot walk his kingdom and be walking another kingdom. It, it doesn't go that way. And this morning, briefly, I want to... It's the continuation of yesterday. Uh, but I'm moving from deliverance because it is, that is what we embolden your spirit to be able to stand against the onslaught of the devil. Because it's the devil that is moving against man. And there's no time that the devil is not moving against man. So you must know how to deal with what is moving against you if you will have peace to enjoy your life and do your destiny. You know, how, how good will it have been or simple and easy if there is no opposition? Everything you plan to do is just working accordingly. Everything you plan to do is just happening like that. You know, it will be very easy. No opposition, no nothing. But it is not so. In fact, it is the time that you expect to be resting that suddenly opposition will arise. The children of Israel just woke up and they saw that the Philistines have come against them. Maybe they wanted to have a party. You didn't know what they were planning to do. Maybe they had a family meeting. Maybe they didn't have that. The enemy just showed up. And you must always know what to do. But our life is beyond just what the enemy is bringing against. There's what God is doing. So why what God is doing is happening, you must know how to keep shutting down what the devil is doing. The two must be happening simultaneously. That was why in the days of Ezra, the day of Nehemiah, they were building with one hand. They had their, uh, their weapon in the other hand to fight if the enemy comes around. That is how it goes. And to be able to function like that, there's a peculiar operation in the spirit that the believer must master. And that's the, uh, part of what I want to talk about briefly this morning. There's a peculiar operation that you as God's child, must operate in the spirit. But most of the time, people get carried away with the physical world. But you are not just flesh and blood. You are not just flesh and blood. Yes, you are flesh and blood, but you are not just flesh and blood. You are a spirit. You have a soul, and you live in a body. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. That is what forms you composite. Can I have it? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you, separates you wholly, totally, completely, compositely, comprehensively. What makes your total self is what he was praying. And I pray God, your whole, what makes your complete self, spirit, number one, and soul and body. 
be preserved half blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you must understand this about yourself. And anywhere something is more than one, there must be priority. If there will not be confusion, there must be priority and there must be leadership. Who comes first? What comes first? Two ideas occur to you. Start nylon production business and then go for your master's. Once something is more than one, it is time to prioritize. It is time to prioritize. It is time to choose the leader. Which comes first? Which comes next? Here, it is not two. There are three. Spirit, soul, and body. And it has put it according to the order of leadership. Spirit first, soul next, the body comes after. But some people have rearranged. Body first. He doesn't even know he has a spirit. Body first, then so after. Do you know some people, he, won't, he has not, he, he, he will, he, the way he treats the body. Some people, he didn't go to school. He didn't develop his mind. He's buying shiny lace. So, he's decorating the body. The mind is empty. It's a pauper. And you all know that if you are sound, and you are advanced mentally, you will make more money than somebody that is not adv as advanced, but is muscular. You can carry 10 bags of cement in 10 minutes and things like that. It will also make money, but it will not make as much as the one that is using, as developed this man is using. The same way, what your mind will fetch you, what your soul, what the mental capacity will fetch you is nothing near what your spirit developed. Developed spirit will fetch you. And that is why people that give more attention to the development of their spirit man, they will do higher things. Because they will be fetching what they do from the realm of God that is superior. So the believer has the opportunity so be advanced at the three levels. But you now find our productivity at the level of what each person prioritizes. Some people give more attention to the body. Some give more to the mind. Some give more to the spirit. But the spirit will always yield more because the spirit is the leader. And when you are born again, your spirit man is alive unto God. The life of God is right in there. And then you qualify for your mind to be renewed. You can now renew your mind. And jack up the level at which your mind, your soul, your will, your mental faculty is operating. And then that same life also is quickening your body. So the believer that has the life of God is at a greatest advantage on the earth. Above everybody. So if you are a, a born-again child of God professor, all other professors that are not saved must, cannot, should not be able to come near you. You should write some heavy papers, heavy documents. Uh -uh, that the, 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 the professor of professors that... You were not born. When they have become prof, they will call you and say, come here. Ogunaya, come here. Where did, you get, where did you get this stuff from? Where? Because they have read far and near. They read what came from Oxford. They read what came from Cambridge. They have read everything they, they didn't see. Because you are pulling it out from the Holy Ghost. Yes. Pulling it out from the Holy Ghost. It is time for you to start your peculiar function in the spirit, from the spirit. You are born so. You are created so. You can see that. You caught it already. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Solutions from the spirit realm in, in, in medicine, 
that is not existing in any book, but it's working. It's getting results. Then we have to ask you, then we have to, then we have to, then we have to ask you to come and explain. Explain that procedure again. How did you say? Because when you are studying and praying, the Holy Ghost hook your mind to the spirit realm, and you saw that Caesarean section that they have done this particular way can be done this particular, and you are getting higher results that your bosses cannot gain say. It can happen in any field. How do you think that Daniel was able to become counselor to five kings, one after the other? Because every king, when they were dying, they will put it in their record that if you will succeed and this kingdom will not crash under your rulership, there is a man in this kingdom. His name is Daniel. The wisdom he operates by is out of this world. Reckon with him. <laughs> they were passing it down from, from hand to hand. From hand to hand. Brilliant elder statesman, but connected to the power that is beyond the human. They will need you. You can see that. They will need you in the day that human problems are not responding to human solution. And you have supernatural operation. You have supernatural in the banking world. It happens anywhere. In the administrative world. Did Daniel not just say they should give him a night? The king wanted this. He said, tell me the dream and interpret it. They said, king, it doesn't go that way. There is no king that asks for such. You tell us the dream. We will interpret it. Uh, the king said, no, you want to. He said, tell me the dream and interpret it. And I will know that you are correct. You are correct uh, magicians or whatever you call yourself. And he has already given you a decree. By three o'clock, we will take off your head. Because that's how to get results from man. Threaten him. He will do something. <laughs> and Daniel has said, why is this so hasty? Why is this so? Just give me a night. He went to his own company. Because in this kingdom, you are never stranded. You don't run around like a headless chicken. We connect to power. We connect to information. We connect to... There is something... One man sang a song sometime. He look on to what? There is something beyond what you are hearing. There is something beyond what you are seeing. There is something beyond where you are seated now. And you must know how to function and access that spirit realm. And Daniel came to his company and they went to pray. Just one all night. Can I hear you say just one all night? Oh, come on, write it down in capital letter. Everything you are battling with, will I know who is this? Where will I? Just one all night. Get to pray. Do something. Something will happen. Stop being lazy. I come this morning in the name of the Lord God of Israel, the shepherd of Israel himself, to get his people delivered from laziness. It is laziness that is the problem of God's people. Not just staying there, expecting it to drop like rain in his mouth. Not doing what he should do to function in the realm of dominion that God has ordained and authored. Just one all night. Did they pray? They prayed. Did they put effort in the spirit? Their spirit because their lives were at stake. And what happened? Olorun Daniel to tun alagbe wa Olorun Joseph to tun mo ala Olorun Ifarao Yes Lord Olorun Ifarao You know I love that phrase Olorun Daniel to tun alagbe wa you can sit down. Don't tempt me singing this morning. You can sit down. You know, they prayed. They did what they had to do. He knows how to access the spirit realm. He knows that he is not controlled. He's not limited by everything that just goes around. There's always a solution. 
You don't know where it is. Your mind don't know where it is. Your spirit knows where it is. So connect to the spirit. Was the dream replayed back to him or not? Because sometimes we, 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 we downplay some fantastic miracles of the Bible. That somebody will have a dream. Can you imagine? The pastor here had a dream. He forgot. And this pastor goes to pray and God gave him the same dream. And he remembered and told him and said, yeah, exactly, exactly. And you don't know a miracle has taken place. Who cooks dreams? Who gives dreams? You know, people have attacks in dreams because the devil can come to play games against your mind. Let me tell you something this morning. There is a realm you function. Oh, okay, oh boy. I said there is a realm. It is because you don't frequent that realm. It is because you don't get there often. There is a realm that you, as a child of God, born again, child of God, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, that you have access to function in and operate by. The devil cannot near the place. He can't come near. Although there are realms also that you function that the devil can come. In the realm of the mind. Demons can camouflage as thoughts. And fire some thoughts into your mind. But in the realm of the spirit, in the spirit realm, the higher realm of God, where the word of God that is sharper than two edges saw, that, 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 that separates, you know, very sharp, that helps you to separate the mind and the spirit. So you know what is not from the spirit, you know what is not from that. So you don't take what the devil is bringing for, as for what God is bringing. So whatever the devil is doing in the night with bad dreams and stuff does not shake you. You know it is just one of the devil's works that have been destroyed. And then you, you, you speak to it because you are operating from a superior place. Have you traveled before that when you took on from the ground, it was raining. And then you rose above the rain. In the plane, you rose above the rain. You are looking, it's still raining down, but where you are, it's not raining. Or sometimes, before you take off, you see the cloud. And then you rose above the cloud. And you are looking down on the cloud like that. It is time to rise up. Tell your neighbor, it is time to rise up. It is time to rise up. Sit down, please. Don't, don't operate in the zone where... The de- you, you, and, you and the devil should not be doing you push me, I push her. You understand what I'm saying? Have you seen uh, somebody using uh, vegetable stem against iron steel? How does he? What is going to happen? Huh? You know vegetable now. I don't want to use tree. Just vegetable stem. The stem of vegetable that you can throw into your mouth and chew. Somebody brings that to fight. And you have steel in your hand. What is go- Who has won? That is how superior the spirit realm is. To the art realm. And it is not that some people, some special anointed apostles, apostolic apostles, are the ones that God has designed to operate in that realm. No. In fact, in your creation, you know, one of the chapters I love to read in the Bible is Genesis 1. And the the beginning of every year, when I start to read my Bible all over again from Genesis 1, I can't just leave Genesis 1 (laughs) because I just love Genesis 1. There's a way it shows you who God is 
and who he has created you to function like. In your creation, as a human being, before the fall of Adam, man was created to be like God. Every other thing, when God started creating, let there be light. There was darkness everywhere. He made the tangible heaven and earth. And then he created the light. Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that light was good. And then, he cre- that is to say, if what you are seeing is not good, create another one. You didn't hear. What you are seeing is not good. He didn't say you should complain. He didn't say you should murmur. He didn't say you should accuse another person. What you are seeing is not good. What? Create another man. Another one. That's why I tell some of our staff. I say, you are stressing me. I will not complain again. I will just ask God for a replacement. A better replacement. And that's it. You don't have to come. God was not battling with uh, darkness. He just created light. And he saw that it was good. In other words, if it was not good, he will create another one until he gets the one that is good. Jesus prayed for one man, blind man. He said, do you see now? He said, I see men walking. Before he was not seen. Now he could see men walking as trees. Did Jesus put his head down and say, am I the son of God? Is this power is still there as of food? Did you see Jesus do that? He knew what was working. So what did he do? He gave him a second touch. And then he started seeing men as men. So our problem is laziness. Is that okay? Or probably number one, laziness. Number two, distraction. Distraction from the real work that makes, that brings the spirit realm to bear on your affairs. That's the problem of man. And I will give you this example. You have heard Daddy share the testimony of painless delivery when we had our first son. And then when we had our second uh, child, our daughter, the it was not as painless as the first one. And it was not because the word of God has reduced or the power of God has reduced. It is because I didn't give the same attention. And I see some people, they are not giving any attention at all. So they are living like mere men. And you know, a Christian that is not paying attention to his spiritual divine operation he is not, he's at a gross disadvantage because you are not an unbeliever that they are still waiting for to get saved. The mercy of God is still hovering. To, you are already saved. You are in the kingdom. So you are an active enemy of the devil. And you are now not working your kingdom. Maybe the previous one are ah, almost 24-7. Five times, six times a day. Dangerous scriptures. Listen, it's so real in my spirit. It's so real that I'm redeemed from the cause of the law. That that cause that God placed upon, upon Eve about sorrow at conception, I am exempted. It was so real. That the spirit that raised Jesus from this alive here is quickening this body. God separates babies from the womb. He's just going to do a clean separation. No pain, no tears, no nothing and things like that. It was so real. And it kept being real every day. Kept being real every day. But by the second one, about four years after, there was no, there was also, because I knew what to do. Number one, I didn't start on time. Number two, it was not as intense as the, as the first one. So, by the time I was to push, you could hear Baraka Bala. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And things like that. So, from that time, I know that it is not, God has put everything there to work. As much as you can work, it is left to you. 
You understand what I'm saying? So it's not that I don't pity people. I pity people sometimes in the flesh. But you see, if you will operate in the spirit with people, you will not pity anybody. Eh, I don't have money yet. Why don't you have money? Why don't you? Himself became poor. That you through his poverty might be made rich. And you don't have money. Because you are lazy. Because you are distracted. Because you have abandoned divine provision. And you are running after that which is not bread. Because when it comes to divine provision, let me digress a bit. In the mountain of the Lord, it shall be seen, the provision of the Lord. There is no child of God that, is, that has not been provided for, overly provided for, beyond measure. And the problem of most people is that, number one, they don't know where their provision is. The first thing is not... Lord, give me money. Lord, give me pro. The first thing, where is my own? Where have you put my treasure? So some people don't know where God has put their treasure. He's doing another man's job. He's doing a work that will never yield. Optimally for him. That you like a course or you like a business does not mean that is where you are going to be blessed. Hello, somebody. That you like a location. They took you to Lagos. They drove you through Lekki to VI. And you like one house. That does not mean that that is where you are going to be blessed. But most people don't bother. They are is in another location where his provision is not. If you have the, the pleasure or the displeasure of meeting Lot. Because I don't know where he is, whether it's in heaven or hell. So if it's in heaven, the pleasure. If it's in hell, the displeasure. Of meeting Lot. Ask him. He will tell you that your provision can be attached to a, a, a man. Abraham will tell you your provision can be attached to a location. Some other people will tell you your prayer can be attached to, an, to obedience, to an instruction. But people think, I will just pray. And when they don't pray, he looks around for who has means around them and turn the attention on the person and commit another error of replacing God with man. So you want to be wealthy, you want to enjoy life, ask God where he has put your provision. And the day you know it, you start accessing it. Nothing can stop your greatness. But most people don't. He's just looking around. What is working? What is working? And then he goes into it. So let me try to run this off this morning. That you were created so. He made man in his image. After his life. Every other thing gone. God, God showed us from verse 1 of Genesis to 25, that is how he expects you to function on the earth. You need it. It is not existing. Create it. That is how to be God on the earth. That is how God expects you to function. And another thing I saw there, which is a derivative of our operation in the spirit realm, is that everything that came out, there are many more things inside, located inside that thing. That is to say, if a brother comes to church and he gets born again and sets as a convert, he's a convert to the But Inside that brother are virtues and treasures of the kingdom. You start a business today, Inside that business are other things that will come out. You wrote a paper today. Inside that paper are other things that will come out.